Hi, in this video we'll talk about increasing and decreasing functions. The first thing I will do is review interval notation. Then we'll talk about what an open domain interval is. Then we will review increasing, decreasing, and constant functions and how you tell when a function is increasing, decreasing, or constant. Then we'll explain how the derivative indicates whether a function is increasing, decreasing, or constant. And we'll define critical numbers because we'll need that when we do the derivative to determine the function's behavior. So let's start with a quick review of interval notation. Okay, An interval is an infinite set. Because of this, it's impossible to list all of the numbers. So for example, if I have a number line and I want to indicate all of the numbers between 3 and 7, there are a lot, in fact, an infinite number of numbers between 3 and 7 when you consider the decimals, the fractions, the irrational numbers, all the kinds of numbers that are in there. Not just the whole numbers, but all of the numbers. So in order to indicate that, we have this thing called set notation. 3 is less than x, and x is less than 7. So x is between 3 and 7. But in interval notation, what we do is we write the smallest value. Then we put a comma, and we put the largest value. So we're just describing from smallest to largest what our numbers are. Now, the endpoints may or may not be included. The one that I have drawn here would have also been drawn with open circles, like this, and that means the endpoints aren't included. However, if this has an equal on each end, then those endpoints would be included. We would put solid circles, and I would put brackets on my number line instead of the parentheses. So a bracket, and it can be going in either direction, means included endpoint. And a parenthesis means excluded endpoint. So in order to write this interval notation, well, if I want to do this between 3 and 7, including 3 and 7, on the number line, I would use brackets. And for my interval notation, I would also use brackets. So the number line and the interval pretty much just match exactly. Now, if I wanted the excluded endpoints, such as open circles at 3 and 7, my number line would have parentheses at 3 and 7. And my interval notation would still be the smallest number, comma, the largest number, but with parentheses on the end. Now, this is not to be confused with a point. This is not a point. It's all about context. So somewhere within the exercise, it would indicate interval, okay, and not a point, okay? So I know that it does look like if you go over 3 and up 7, there's a point here, but that's not what we're talking about in this context. So that's all you have to know about interval notation. And one other thing to know about interval notation is sometimes you have an interval. Say, for example, I want all the numbers bigger than 10, including 10. So it goes like this. All the numbers bigger than 10, including 10. So my smallest number would be 10. My largest number would be positive infinity. 10 is included. Infinity is never included. So you have to remember, always use parentheses with infinity. And that's with plus 
or minus infinity. You can't use the bracket to include them because you can't reach infinity, therefore you can never include it. So that's a summary of interval notation. Now let's talk about open domain intervals because these are the kinds of intervals we'll be using when we indicate increasing, decreasing, constant intervals of a function. Open's very easy. It just means ends are not included. Under any circumstance, are the ends going to be included? Okay? And domain means that we're looking for or looking at x values, never y. Now, this is the requirement for describing increasing, decreasing, and constant intervals of a function. Okay? They're always open, meaning parentheses on both ends, not included, and using x values or domain values only. So let's talk about what it looks like when a function is increasing, decreasing, or constant. So whenever a function is rising from one point to the next, reading from left to right, notice that as I move my pen, I'm going up from left to right. So a rising function or a rising graph of the function means the function is increasing. So for any value of x here, if I move to the right, this function value is going to be higher than this. So if this is x1, and this is x2, and this is f of x1, and this is f of x2, then f of x2 is going to be greater than f of x1, okay, as you move from left to right. Okay, so you can just tell the graph is going up. Now here's an example of a falling or a decreasing function because for every point that I put on this graph or if I just trace the entire graph, I see that the graph is falling. So if you have a falling graph, that means the function is decreasing. And even here on this far end, where it looks like it's flat, it's not technically flat. It's getting closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to the x-axis. So it's always falling. So if this is x1 and this is x2, and this is f of x1, and this is f of x2, then f of x2 is going to be less than f of x1 as you move left to right. Okay, so it's going to, the graph is going to fall or fall from left to right. Now this function is this line right here, this horizontal line. Whenever you have a horizontal line, that means there is no change from this point to this point in the y value, okay? That's called a constant function. So it's a constant, okay? So for this x1 and this x2, f of x1, which is right here, and f of x2, which is right here, are equal. So f of x1 
equals f of x2. And again, we always move from left to right, although with the constant, it really doesn't matter because they're always on that flat horizontal. So in summary, if the graph is rising, the function is increasing. If the graph is falling, the function is decreasing. And if the graph is a horizontal line, the function is constant. Now let's write the interval notation for each of these. This function is increasing from negative infinity to positive infinity. We always assume that unless we're told otherwise, these graphs continue forever in the direction that they're going. This function is decreasing from negative infinity to positive infinity. That's my interval notation. And this function is constant from negative infinity to positive infinity. However, some functions will do a combination of these. So for example, we have a function here and I'm going to highlight where the function is rising. So it gets to right there. And then it rises again here. Now, if I want to write the intervals where it's increasing, I need to do open domain intervals. Now remember, these graphs continue, right? So this left end goes both to the left and down. So it's spreading out. It's never going vertical because it's a function and it would fail the vertical line test. So it's going to the left and it's going down, but it's spreading out as it goes down. This end, the right end of the function, is going up and it's also spreading to the right. So it's continuing to rise and go to the right. So if I want to write where this is increasing, I have to look at the x values, okay, only. And then here, these x values. Okay, so it's increasing from negative infinity to about negative 4. I'm just estimating. And notice I have parentheses on both ends, even at the negative 4. And then it's also increasing from 3 to positive infinity. Because remember, on this upper end here, it continues to rise. So the values of x for that would be positive infinity. Now this function is decreasing also. So for decreasing, I'm going to be looking at where the graph is falling. So I'll go back and I'll, I'll highlight that area where it appears to fall. That's decreasing. And so I'm just estimating these values again. Looks like it's about from negative 4 and again over here about 3. It's probably more like 3.5, but since we called it 3 before, I'll call it the same. So it's decreasing from negative 4 to 3. Notice the open intervals. Okay. Now this function is never flat. Okay. So there's no interval where it's constant. Okay. So it's never constant. In order to be constant, there would have to be a section where it's flat. Okay. Not just a point where it looks like it's flat, but a section where it's flat. So it's never going to be constant. All right, so let's do a couple of these examples. Find the open intervals where the function graph below is increasing or decreasing. And notice, since it's never constant, they don't ask us for that. So I'm going to highlight where it's rising. 
But remember, I'm describing X values only. So it's these X values all the way forever. Because remember, this continues to spread out. So it's rising everywhere there. So our function is increasing from negative infinity to four open interval. Now our function is decreasing when the graph is falling. So it's these values of x, not values of y, the values of x, and that's from positive four to positive infinity. Example two, find the open intervals where the function graph below is increasing or decreasing. So this one, similar to the other example I gave, rises in two places and I need to describe those X's only. So it's rising for all of these X's. So that's from negative infinity to negative four. And it starts to rise again at negative two, two plus infinity. And you just put commas between the two intervals. There's no union or anything. It's just commas, okay? Now we're going to describe where it's falling. So there's a little section in here where the graph is falling. So it's falling from here to here. So that's from negative 4 to negative 2. Notice parentheses on both ends. So this is the interval of x values, that's domain values where the function is decreasing. It's from negative 4 to negative 2.